I'm Sander van Doorn and I'm here for a new series of uh, studio sessions. Uh, a few years ago I launched uh, a series um, explaining a little bit uh, about uh, different elements in producing a track. Um, so um, right now, a few years later, there's new software, um, there's new plugins. So uh, uh, I wanted to do kind of like a similar kind of studio sessions where you know I, I kind of I kind of explain the basic elements uh, on how to produce a track. So um, right now this is the first series, um, and today I'm going to explain a little bit more about how to use a kick, how to build a kick, how to add a bassline. So it's going to be all about the kick and bassline. Right, so basically uh, this is Logic Pro X, this is the newest version of the software uh, I use to produce music. Um, so today we're going to talk about um, how to build a kick and also um, how to add a bass line and to make it one you know, perfect whole. Um, so basically uh, what I've done is um, I've, I've searched for a few kicks that I, that I have um, used in the past. Um, so this is kick number one. And number two, number three. So, so what I did for this session, I um, basically used completely different kicks with different uh, frequencies. Uh, for instance, this is uh, a kick used for a higher frequency, and this kick in its itself is much lower per uh, frequency. So basically uh, what I usually do is um, I take one kick where I really like the attack. The attack basically is, is the first uh, thing um, a kick does. So it's pretty much this, this part here. And um, I use that uh, for, for the sound of a kick and the, the lower frequency I use for, for the tail of a kick. So. Uh, in this case, pretty much uh, it doesn't matter which uh, software you use to uh, produce music, whether it's Ableton or Logic or, or, or Studio, um, um, uh, Fruity Loops, whatever. Uh, this basically is, is the same principle for all, all that software. So basically, so I have this kick over here. So I want to use the attack of this kick, and but I want to use the tail of a lower kick. So basically, what you do is pretty pretty simple. It's um, what I always do is I use a single band EQ. Basically, this is um, a filter. No, it, it, it's on low cut. So <coughs> by putting this filter on, I now only have the sound of the, of the attack of the kick. And I'm actually going to do exactly the same with the kick below, but uh, the opposite. So I'm going to use the same filter. And I'm going to put this one on a high cut. So basically the kick now doesn't have um, a, a top line anymore. So when you combine those two together, now you have a kick with a different uh, uh, low and a different high. So this actually sounds like a pretty cool kick. Um, the thing you really need to uh, take in consideration is uh, um, what kind of key you're going to produce a track. So right now it's, this is a pretty low key uh, because the till is, is a pretty low frequency. Um, so um, you want to make sure that uh, the bass line isn't going to conflict with the kick. So what it's good to do if you're um, using a very melodic track where you definitely going to need the, um, the bass line um, as part of the kick, so what you can, what you can do is um, uh, pretty much use less of the tail of the kick. So let's put it on here. So uh, together, if this now it sounds a bit strange. So what I do is I make sure that this kick, <coughs> this tail is gonna be uh, cut off a little bit and. I'm going to use a fade out and just a little small fade out, let's say 50. So now it uh, is kind of like topped in a nice way so it doesn't uh, stutter a little bit. So I'm going to do the same with this kick, fade out uh, 50. All right, here we go. 
So now we have the same kick, but uh, the tail's gone. So that's, that's great because now it's not going to conflict anymore with uh, the baseline. The thing is, now we don't have a tail. Um, it kind of misses a bit of a drive. But um, I'm going to show you a few things uh, how to uh, f um, you know, really optimize the kick. So what I usually use is, um, well, we're going to send these two into a general bus channel. So now I have one channel over here that basically holds the whole kick. So, <coughs> right, so um, this is Camel Fat, Camel Fat version 3. Um, I, this is the uh, plugin I use a lot to finalize a kick. So what I usually do is I'm pretty much gonna, gonna kill all these functions over here. And I'm gonna keep open the distortion. So now we have the plugin completely turned off. So what I usually do is I got, I'm gonna use the distortion a little bit, a little bit of a tube. So this, this really cranks up the kick. As you can see over here, as you can see over here, the volume um, still stays pretty low, but you can really hear the kick right now. So that's, this, is, uh, this is gonna make for a very good kick. So, um, you know, if you're gonna crank this up, it's going to stay really, really tight. Let me see. So I'm going to 3.5. So this is a pretty, pretty solid kick. I'm actually going to use this on top of that. Here you go. <coughs> All right, so um, yeah, we just uh, worked on a really nice uh, kick. Uh, we cut the tail and we really cranked up the volume of the kick. So now it's all about um, adjusting a baseline to the kick. So uh, my favorite plugin to use for that is uh, actually the Trillion uh, from uh, Spectrosonics. Um, the sounds that are in this uh, uh, plugin are, are really, really tight, and um, uh, the volume, the recording of, of these uh, different uh, bass lines are absolutely phenomenal. So this is a really cool synth uh, to use when you're not using hardware like like a Moog Voyager. So um, I'm, I just went to synth bass, and these are all uh, very nice synth uh, basses. So what I'm going to do right now, we're going to keep it very simple, and um, so I'm going to put this off. And this on. So now we're in our matrix scheme and we're gonna. So here is the baseline and we're gonna. So basically, I'm, I'm just gonna put it on the first note. So basically, now it's, it's gonna, gonna come together with the kick. I've just uh, um, drawn in a few um, notes, uh, it's gonna be the G note. And it's gonna it's playing solo right now, but if you, as you can hear, there is a little bit of an echo. So I'm gonna kill the echo from the effects bank. Here you go. Okay, so now uh, it's still going on. Let me see flame. So. Yeah, so now we have a very um, simple bass line. So what I usually do is I'm gonna kind of use this this particular bass line uh, as a tail for my kick. So I'm just gonna use the same uh, high cut frequency filter. So if you're gonna put this on around this, so now you have um, just a note, um, and if you add the kick. Then you have um, created a new till for a kick. And we just recorded the bass line. So um, I recorded it in audio. So I've already um, imported it into my track. We got uh, the bass line over here. Here it is. So as you can see, it has a very long till. So I'm just gonna, gonna use this tone over here. Perhaps the till is a little bit too long. So I'm gonna use the same thing, I the fade. I've used uh, to build a kick I'm going to use for the bass line. I'm going to basically let's try this. Yeah, so now uh, the tail, it kind of drops uh, towards the second kick. Um, and basically the thing is that right now the bass line is definitely conflicting with, uh, with the kick. So I want to make sure that uh, in this area uh, the bass line doesn't play yet. So we're going to use a fade in tool. And we're going to put that on 100. So 
as you can hear right now, it doesn't really have an attack anymore and the tail is cut off a little bit. So right now, if we're, we're gonna build the bass line together with the kick. Now the kick doesn't uh, really conflict anymore with, uh, with the bass line. So we can also add a little bit more volume to the bass line. So now you have a pretty tight kick. I'm gonna, gonna adjust the curve a little bit. <clears throat> so now all of a sudden, uh, instead of using the tail of a kick, now the tail is actually the bass line uh, that you wanna use in your, in your uh, program. Yeah, so now uh, we, we actually built the kick together with the bass line. You can also use the, the, the Twilliam itself uh, by using um, a, a plugin, for instance, a sidekick uh, that kind of ducks the frequency um, when the kick drops in. Um, so in that case, you can actually use the different tones when you're going to build like a melody with different layers. So um, right now. So right now we, we have the kick and the bass line. Um, so what we can, can do right now is uh, add uh, a little bit more groove to my bass line. Let me see. So now we're gonna go back to the Twillion. And we're gonna see if we can find a different bass line that's pretty cool. Let me see, oh, that one isn't working, okay. So this is more of a, a saw bass and then perhaps Okay, well, this is a pretty cool square bass. All right, so I'm gonna kind of build a bit of a very, very simple bass line. And uh, let me see. So this is a pretty, pretty straightforward uh, bass line. So what, what you can notice is that I'm not actually using a tone on, on in the first note. Uh, that's because uh, th we're going to make room for, for the kick. So uh, in this case, the bass line and kick coming together is going to create uh, the, the best, the highest possible volume uh, without um, each other conflicting a little bit. So right now, if we're going to play this in solo, so you, you have a pretty f a firm bass line. Um, what you can also do is actually add a little bit of shuffle and for instance, this. So now the notes have been shifted a little bit and it creates a little bit more groove to your bass line. So we're gonna add everything together right now. Okay. And let's just copy this over here, here, and here. So this is a pretty cool uh, bass line. You can uh, also adjust uh, the frequency a little bit, the high cuts. Okay, right now it's actually it's a pretty uh, pretty cool and tight uh, schedule. So obviously there is different uh, ways of, of uh, drawing in your notes. Uh, you can also just uh, cut these. So that sounds pretty cool as well. It's a way to filter out. Yeah, you can actually use the notes over here. Everything stays on the same frequency. So uh, now it's a pretty tight uh, bass line. Um, perhaps you don't even need uh, the tail we've just created. But you can uh, really feel uh, that, uh, that there's a difference now than when you add the, the, the bass line. It gives a little bit more volume and it, it kind of, you know, it, um, uh, puts it everything uh, together. So, uh, so this is basically how I uh, built a kick and a bass line. This is the first episode. Um, today I explained a little bit more about how to build a kick um, uh, and a bass line, obviously how to combine the two together and make sure that nothing conflicts with each other and uh, the kick as well as the bass line comes out as loud as possible. Just a few basic uh, steps, perhaps uh, uh, it's gonna help you a little bit in the process of producing your own track. The next episode, I'm gonna tell a little bit more about how to master a track 
track. So I'm going to show a few plugins and how to EQ a track where it's, it's going to be you know, the highest possible volume. If you have any questions, actually, uh, you can uh, drop me an email at social at senevendor.com. And in the last episode, I'm going to treat a few of you guys on some answers uh, on your questions. So uh, please make sure to drop as many questions as you want. And uh, I'm going to answer as much as possible. So guys, see you next time.